to see you in the Lord's house this morning for Friend Day. Boy, good to see our visitors with us this morning, and thank you for being here. Well, grab your songbooks, if you will. Let's stand. Page number 322. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Page 322. Look at your songbook. Page 322 is Stand Up for Jesus. Page 323 is Standing on the Promises there. And uh, so we get a little bit confused. We're so glad you're in the Lord's house. You can be seated this morning. And uh, we're going to sing a song this morning for our choir. And I love this song. Probably one of my favorite choir songs uh, because it talks about the name of Jesus. And as the choir sings it this morning, I want you to think about uh, the words. And uh, someday there's coming a day where the Bible says, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And what is it? It's the name of Jesus. And what a day that's going to be. We're going to sing that song for you.
like the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, we're so glad you're here this morning. Let's stand and turn around as the choir goes down. Turn around, shake hands with somebody this morning. Tell them you're glad to see them in the Lord's house.
tithes and offerings. And another chance, church, to be faithful to the Lord in our giving. And a wonderful day. Boy, friend day and uh, exciting part of our spring program. A lot of folks not here this morning, a lot of folks sick. And uh, let's remember, let's do our part. Well, what can we do? We can encourage them, but most of all, we can pray for them. Uh, there's power in prayer. Let me remind you of that. There's still power in prayer. When we go to prayer, we talk to an almighty God that has all power. And uh, thank the Lord. And he, and, he, and he knows everything as well. He's omniscient, omnipotent, and, and, and omnipresent. Thank God for it. And uh, nobody like the Lord. Pray for Miss Candy James this morning. Church, once again, uh, just can't say it enough. She's really battling right now with cancer, and uh, it's tough to see. And uh, so many of our friends uh, there, and, and it's friend day, but so many of our friends are gone on to heaven now because of uh, cancer and things like that. And uh, we can do our part here. You know, she's battling cancer right now. Let's encourage her uh, right now, Miss Candy James. And then also, boy, good to see Miss Olga here this morning. God bless you, Miss Olga. Been praying for you. Yeah, let's give her a hand. Went through some testing. Uh, this week, and uh, Miss Olga needs a, a lung transplant there, and uh, we're praying, and we know God's able to do that, and uh, it's just so good to see her here this morning. And then my friend, Brother Ken Phelan, is here this morning as well, praying for a healing touch for Brother Ken. God bless you, Miss Teresa, this morning. And uh, it's a neat thing seeing those people that we're praying for, and then to see them here on friend day and uh, boy what a wonderful thing it is well, let's go to the lord in prayer for our offering this morning brother heefner if you will lead us in prayer this morning Morning and welcome to Grace Baptist Church. Excited about Friend Day today, and praise the Lord, it looks like a good turnout. Excited to see what the Lord has in store for us. A couple of announcements this morning. We had 42 soul winners out on Saturday knocking on doors, and praise the Lord for it. Be a part of those soul winning efforts every Saturday at 10 a.m. Of course, right now, even more the reason uh, to go, you're earning points for your team there. And I want to say it's really for building a habit, you know, you right now maybe you're going for the points, and hey, you know what? If it gets you there, great. But really, what you want to be doing is, you know, getting in the habit of going soul winning on Saturdays, and we want to build up a soul winning church here. Make sure you're part of that every Saturday at 10 a.m. Did want to mention uh, April every every uh, Wednesday night in April, we're having our offerings going toward our college students. So we've been mentioning that for the last couple of weeks there and just encourage you um, we want to be a good uh, we want to be a good blessing to our co college students they are just out there trying to be trained so that they can go and serve the Lord and uh, just exciting what God has for them and we want to be a part of that and really help them out there so don't forget that and then of course tonight at the P after the PM service 
for Friend Day, we're having our chili cook-off, and I am so excited. I haven't eaten in seven weeks preparing for this night, and so I know you guys don't believe that, but, uh, but I'm excited about that, excited about all the different people entering there, and it's going to be a good time. Make sure you're back here tonight for that. Uh, coming up next Sunday is Baby Day, and of course, that is uh, going to be just a, a special service there. I know my son, he is one year old, and uh, I hope he doesn't cry like Travis did when he comes up here, but uh, he's going to be dedicated that day, and I'm excited about that. Make sure you're there for that. And then April 28th is Sing a New Song Day uh, here at the church, and we're going to have a soup bean fellowship for the PM service as well. So we're going to be loaded up on beans, and uh, I'm not going to make any comment on that because I know where you guys think I'm going with that, but uh, we're not going to do it. Um, then Tuesday, April 30th at 6 p.m., Grace and Honor Ladies Pizza Fellowship. Don't forget, memorize your Bible verse and bring in your recipe card. See Miss Lisa for details on that. Again, that is Tuesday, April 30th at 6 p.m., uh, teenagers, if you were if you missed it today, you missed it. I mean, we had the pinnacle of cuisine today for clean, teen class. It was McDonald's sausage McMuffins, and I want to tell you that was a blessing. But every Sunday for Sunday school, we are having a little bit of a breakfast there. I encourage you to be a part of that. I will have to buy more food if you come, and I want to. I want to buy more food, so make sure you're there for that. Uh, also coming up for the teenagers on April 26th. That's I don't know why it says Tuesday, but April 26th at 6 p.m., that should be a, uh, a Friday. It is a teen scavenger hunt, and we're going to be meeting at the church here at 5 p.m., and we're going to be actually heading over to Lowville Park over near Galleon there and doing a scavenger hunt in the woods there, and we're excited about that. So be a part of the activities of the church. I think we have, I'm pretty sure, Miss uh, was Granny has a birthday, isn't it? Jeremy. Brother Jeremy, yeah, I was looking here, April 14th, Jeremy Moore. Randy Mullins as well, and then Aunt Donna here too, just coming up tomorrow, and so that is awesome, a lot of birthdays, and then Granny was yesterday, yeah, she, I know Grandma told me about that, Granny was yesterday excited about that, and she's, I don't even want to say it, but she's uh, 93 now, is that right? 94, oh my word, and, and she's the healthiest, you know, you'll ever, you'll ever meet, and so praise the Lord for that. Well, let's sing a happy birthday to everybody that had their birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. One more thing, real quick. I just want to say for the Marines here today, after the morning service, we are going to just meet here very briefly, right on the front, so I can give you some instructions. Amen. Well, part of our spring program. Let's see. What week is this of our spring program? Is this our? It's our third week. That's exactly right. Of course, the first week was Resurrection Sunday, and then last week King James Bible Sunday. That was a great Sunday. And then today Friend Day, and uh, three weeks out of an eight-week program, and uh, seeing people get back into church. Uh, folks, can I remind you in these last days? The devil is amassing an army for himself. And we need an army for the Lord in these last days. More. Amen. And uh, didn't mean it like that, but uh, that's okay. And uh, we need an army for the Lord, soul winners, and uh, people just getting back to the Lord's house like it used to be, pleasing and honoring the Lord in everything that we do, and really just looking every day for the Lord to come back. Don't you know it could be today that the Lord comes back? Hopefully you're ready. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, uh, we want you to know for sure that you're on your way to heaven by the time that you leave here today. And that's what it's all about, uh, uplifting the name of Jesus. And I want all, all the church to be in prayer. Uh, coming up this Wednesday, uh, Miss Karen has her surgery. Is that right, Miss Karen? Coming up on Wednesday and uh, going in for cancer surgery. And uh, we want to remember uh, Miss Karen coming up uh, this Wednesday, April 17th. Very important. Church, let's be praying a uh, special prayer for that. And then, of course, tonight, uh, don't forget, be back 6 o'clock for the chili cook-off. Now, we're going to have a little preaching before that, uh, just a little bit, and then we're going to get to the chili cook-off. And excited about uh, that. Now, I think we have 10 people that have signed up for the chili cook-off, and uh, 
I do want to say this. There is a $100 prize for the winner of the chili cook-off tonight. I don't know if you know that or not, but maybe some people that were just like, I'm not doing it, automatically just thought, I'm doing it. Um, I'm doing it. There's no doubt about it. How many of you have not signed up yet, but you say, Pastor, I'm going to bring a chili in as well. All right. So I think we have about 10 or 12 right now, and uh, we'll be judging those. Of course, everybody's bringing things. It'll be a great time of fellowship. You know, the church needs that fellowship time, and so important. And I'll be announcing tonight the update on the points, and we'll see right now the Air Force is in the lead, and, uh, and followed by the Marines, and then... Uh, and then the Navy is in third place. But I do want to say this. The, the order is not, it, it is not going to be the same tonight. Someone has overtaken someone else. And so you're not going to want to miss that. I got it right here in this envelope. Top secret. Right here. The points are right in here. And uh, it's not so top secret that I haven't already looked at it. Uh, I, I did already look at it. but So I know So somebody's going to be overtaken. And I did not mention the last team right there on purpose. Uh, but you make sure uh, there. And the, the Army is... I had to mention them. Amen. All right. Well, grab your songbooks again. Page number 345. Very fitting song for the day. Let's stand once again. What a friend we have in Jesus. Page number 345. this morning, if you will, and you can be seated, but we're going to go ahead and have a special at this time. Miss Savannah is going to come and play for us this morning, and then we'll have our scripture reading.
Well, if you would, go ahead and grab your Bibles uh, this morning, and we'll turn over to the book of Acts, chapter number 20. And uh, we'll just read a couple verses as our text and have our prayer this morning. I want to talk to you about, of course, friends today and the idea of a true friend. And uh, let's read Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7. An unusual passage for this day, but I will bring it all together. So grab your King James Bible in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7. The Bible says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. There were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even until break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. I want to preach this morning on this topic. What is a true friend? A true friend. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you would help today. Holy Spirit, we beg you to move into our presence and work. Lord, I pray that you would convict those here this morning that need to be convicted. Maybe, Lord, there's someone here. Lord, that's not saved. They've never met the greatest friend that will ever be. They've never come to realization, uh, Lord, and been saved. We pray that today would be the day of salvation, and you would save them, Lord, before it's eternally too late. Lord, we pray for others this morning, Lord, that maybe need to be comforted. Lord, we pray that you would give that comfort as only you can do. In everything, we pray, Lord, that the name of Jesus would be uplifted. Lord, you would get all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Could it be that up in heaven God is sitting on his throne Anticipating another sinner will soon become his own years of wasted living and years of toil and strife are just about to be over as he receives the gift of life go sound the horn strike up the choir a sinner is saved, saved from the fire, no more in darkness. He's received my son, all heaven rejoices, that's the value of one. The Holy Spirit has been working to soften up a heart all he needs is a willing servant to simply do his part can you imagine up in heaven the joy there is that day as a sinner bows his head to pray can't you hear the father say go sound the horn strike up the choir a sinner is saved saved from the fire no more in darkness he's received my son all heaven rejoices that's the value of one star construction on his mansion there on hallelujah street he doesn't know yet what is waiting when the savior heal me go sound the horn 
strike up the choir a sinner is saved saved from the fire no more in darkness he's received my son all heaven rejoices that's the value of one all heaven rejoices that's the value of one amen. wasn't that good this morning amen boy i want to tell you that that makes me want to run around a little bit when i think uh, boy when he said start construction on his mansion, right there on Hallelujah Street. Hey, man, I want to tell you, listen, when you get to heaven, don't you know there's going to be mansions there? Man, I don't like those versions of Scripture where it said, uh, you can get a room there. Well, I can get a room here. Hey, man, I'm glad we got a mansion over the hillside. Start construction on his mansion. What happened? He's brought from death unto life. I want to tell you, the best friend is a friend that tells somebody about Jesus. Amen. And uh, don't ever let us think, well, I don't want to offend my friend by talking about religion. Listen, you can throw religion out the window. Who cares about religion? But let's tell everybody we can about Jesus. Amen. Well, Acts chapter number 20 in your Bibles. I'm excited this morning that you're here and excited for Friend Day. I'm excited to see so many of my friends this morning. And I'm humbled and just honored uh, that you would be here well, that's a wonderful thing. I'm going to talk about it this morning, to have friends in this life. Amen. How many of you would know that life might be a little overwhelming without some friends? Right. Isn't that true? You know, the Bible says over in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And then it ends the verse by saying this, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So many times, now listen, so many times we use that to talk about Jesus. And I want to tell you, He is a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother, thank God. But church, can I say this morning that I believe that's talking about a friend. There is a friend out there. And everyone has a friend. Maybe, hopefully, and I'll talk about it this morning. But if you've got a, a good friend, you're blessed. I think there's a friend out there that will even be closer to you than a brother. How many of you can testify to that? Pastor, i got some good friends. Man, it's so good to see some of my friends this morning. I appreciate my friend Jim being here this morning. Bob, I appreciate you being here this morning. Brother Allen, God bless you, my friends. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, overwhelming life can be without some good friends. I look around and I see my friends here this morning, and I am honored that you're here. Some of my best friends this morning have been there uh, with me through this life and through the ups and downs. One of the toughest times, I'll say this morning, I'm not going to get to crying this morning, but one of the toughest times was February 29th. I think probably my best friend was my brother, and uh, my brother James. And uh, he went to heaven on February 29th, and I think about him every day. Boy, I want to tell you, close. We were so close. And I think about him every day. And you don't expect to lose your brother when he's 51. And, uh, boy, as close as two brothers can be, we were. Uh, he was a preacher, a pastor. And, uh, boy, just brought me along in so many ways in the ministry. Always wanting to be together. Boy, Jim, you'd remember we had this group text between me and my brothers. And... Uh, James, always the one. We got to do more together, guys. Remember that, Jim? We got to do more. And sometimes I would read it and say, oh, James, give me a break. You know, <laughs> you know, come on. But James, always wanting to bring people together. Boy, that's what a friend does. I say I'm so thankful that I'm going to see him again. I'm going to see my friend in just a little while, I'm looking forward to it. Always wanted to bring people together. He'd say, we, guys, we got to do more together. We planned this summer. He, he told me back in November at the hospital in Columbus, and he said, guys, 
this coming spring and summer, we're going to golf a lot. We're going to do a lot this summer, and we're going to spend time together. And, you know, like, and, and we all said, yes, we are. There's no doubt about it. But little did we know it was, it was too late. It was too late. So I want to say with your friends, boy, take, take time today with your friends. We don't know if we'll have tomorrow. Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 7, you've read the passage. Many messages have been preached on this subject. And Paul preaches his farewell message to this church at Troas. He's heading to Rome to be martyred for the cause of Christ. And the Bible says in verse number 7, and upon the first day of the week. Now church, right away, I want you to notice when they met. They met the first day of the week. You know, when we're meeting today, we're not meeting on the Sabbath day. That's Saturday. We're meeting on the first day of the week. Uh, you know, that Seventh-day Adventist religion will say, well, you're supposed to meet on the Jewish Sabbath. But did you know, when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, He changed everything. Jesus rose, Because Jesus rose on the first day of the week on Sunday, you know in Acts 16 they took the collection the first day of the week. Did you know Jesus met with them the first day of the week? Acts chapter number 2, the Holy Spirit came down the first day of the week. That's Sunday. And in fact, Matthew 28, Jesus rose from the grave. In the end of the Sabbath, that began to dawn the first day of the week, the Bible says. And we're meeting here this morning. Listen, you didn't make a mistake by not going to church yesterday. You're right where you ought to be. If somebody says, oh, we go to church on the Sabbath. No, that was for the Jew. We go to church on the first day of the week, and that's because Jesus rose from the grave on the first day of the week. I want to help you with that a little bit this morning. Now, the Bible says, notice in verse number 7, in between the lines there, notice the Bible says, they came together to what? To break bread. Now let me just tell you why they came together. They came together for the chili cook-off. <laughs> Amen. Uh, now now I, I make light of that a little bit. But you know what they came together? They came together to fellowship. Some would say that they came together here for communion. But verse number 11, the Bible explains it a little bit further. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten. They're just talking about getting together and eating and having a meal. They're not talking about having a Catholic mass in verse number 7. They're talking about getting together, having a chili cook-off, uh, having a meal there and, 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 and so some preaching going on along with it the first day of the week. Now can I say, that's exactly what we're doing today. The first day of the week, we're getting together. We're going to eat a little bit. Uh, here in just a couple hours, I'm going to a Mexican buffet. I'm excited. This is going to be a very short message today. But you know what? We're coming together, we're breaking bread, and we're fellowshipping together, and there's some preaching going on, just like what was happening in Acts chapter number 20. Now the Bible says they came together, and Paul begins to preach. Now, when Paul preaches, the Bible says that, man, he took off preaching, and he continued until midnight. Now, Brother Grady was here last week, and at some point I thought... Is this going to continue until about midnight? I'm not sure. But the Bible says that Paul preached until midnight. What it does, what, what it says also, if you read on down in verse number 11, it says that after everything had happened during that, even after midnight, he ate a little bit and then he kept preaching, probably till in the morning sometime. So this was a long church service. So when we say we, we, we endure the preaching for 45 minutes, listen, it's not that bad considering. Amen. And uh, so listen, uh, every young man, now listen, I, I will say young man, how many of you think you're a young man? Now I, I also think I'm a little bit young. No, but young man, if you're 25 and under, raise your hand and you're a man. 25 and under. All right, young men, all right. Look good, I like to see it. I like to see your faces too, all right? Don't be rattling your keys back there, dreaming of a, of a Harley or something like that, or a Corvette. Uh, I like to see your faces. Uh, but, uh, but the Bible says here, there's a young man in the midst. 
I want you to put yourself in that spot. You're a, a, a young man. Well, something happens as Paul is preaching. Uh, there, there, the Bible says somebody was sitting in the window. Now, look at verse number 8. The Bible says there were many lights in the upper room where they were gathered together. Now, I don't know about you, but we talk about lights and we talk about those things. I think about, okay, here's a, well, there's no doubt they're in a, uh, they're in a, a, an upper room of a house. They're probably on the third floor of a house somewhere. And the place is just completely packed out. The windows are open. There's lights above and the lights are lit. Uh, I can just see it in my mind. It's hot. It's, it's stuffy. Uh, I mean, this guy, he's sitting there. In fact, they even have the windows open. And the Bible says, here's what happens in, in, in verse number 9. The Bible says, this young man uh, named Eutychus was sitting, the Bible says, in the window. Notice that the Bible says in, in, in verse number 9, there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus. Now, when I think about this, I think, okay, here's Paul preaching. He's preaching till midnight. The natural man, here's what the natural man wants to do. Let me just show you. Here's what he wants to do. And just the tense of the, the verse says this. He was trying. Now listen, look at it. Luke, I can't see your face back there. I want to see your smiling face. You're hiding behind Miss Karen. Thank you, Brother Luke. But when I think about this story, I think about Luke right there. Luke, I'm watching you. Here's a young man sitting in the window, and the Bible says just the tense is he's falling asleep. Now he's trying. He hasn't completely given in to the dark side, you know, and listen, if I'm about to fall asleep in church, and we probably all have done it, whether or not you admit it or not, just raise your right leg about two inches off the ground and hold it. All right? I bet you about 100 people in here right now just did that. <laughs> that will keep you awake. Boy, I remember in college sometimes, uh, you know, coming back from work or something like that, 3 o'clock in the morning, and you kind of just have to... Chris, wake up. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Wake up. You stick your head out the window. Amen. Chris, wake up right now. And you're doing everything that you can do. You know what I'm talking about this morning. Well, I believe there's a fight going on in that church with Eutychus. Brother Grady said uh, to me one time, he said, well, you would have cussed too if a preacher preached till midnight. And uh, <laughs> uh, that's not what Eutychus means though. But, uh, but Eutychus there, he's trying to stay awake. He's trying to stay awake. Well, he gives in and he's falling asleep. Now, here's what happens, church. He falls out. Now, get this because there's a good point. He didn't fall in. Come on now. Listen, there's a truth here. Don't miss it. He didn't fall into the church. He fell out of the church. Now, here's the reason. Listen, don't miss it. The reason he fell out because... He was more out than he was in. Come on now. The reason he fell out was because he was out more than he was in. Now, I want to tell you, no matter who you are, there's going to be some times in this life where you might fall a little bit, but you better be in church more than you're out of church. Everybody, the Bible says, the just man falleth seven times, yet riseth up again. No, there's not one person in here this morning that is perfect. And, and there's always that danger of falling in the Christian life or failing in the Christian life. And I want to tell you this morning, you better be in church more than you better be out of church. Amen. What happened with Eutychus happens to a, a lot of Christians today because they're just Sunday morning Christians. Well, I want to tell you, I don't want to be a Sunday morning Christian. I don't want to offend anybody this morning by any means, but I want to be more than Sunday morning. I know I need Sunday morning. I need Sunday night. I need Wednesday night. Why? I need to be in church more than out of church. How many of you men know that the devil's coming after you to destroy you? Boy, you pick up that phone. You'll see in just two seconds. Sometimes I think that phone's talking to me, Brother Larry. Or, or it's listening to me. Not talking to me listening to me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Man, me and my wife will be talking about something crazy and then boom, it'll pop up on her phone. Usually it's something to do with food. 
or something like that. <laughs> I'm talking about it. She's listening. And, uh, but, 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 and that's how, how many of you know? I mean, it's like that phone is listening to you. Little do we know they're probably watching you as well. Da, da, da. They're watching. Oh, man, I don't know. And then you're like, Alexa, please play music. And it just happens, you know. And uh, it was funny, one time my brother James said he had that. How many of you got Alexa? Boy, I hate that stuff. I got to tell you, I hate Alexa. And Siri, Siri, you know. And how come every time you put your maps in your car, it's a woman telling you which direction to go? Help us. Help us. Come on now. No wonder we get lost. If I ever get lost and my wife says, uh, honey, you do know where you're going. I said, yes, I'm going the scenic route. I wanted to show you. I know where I'm going, woman. You know, <laughs> that's what I want to tra say to Siri sometimes there. Oh, the Bible says here, notice here. The Bible says he's sitting in the window. He's out of church more than he's in church. And because of it, he falls from the third loft and he dies. Now listen, church, he's taken up dead. He's not sleeping. Before you think that he's sleeping, remember, he's taken up dead. Those same people that will tell you that Eutychus just was sleeping or in a coma or something like that, that's the same people that say Jesus was just sleeping in the grave. No, he died. In the same way that Jonah died in that whale. In the same way. He's taken up dead. What happened? He died because he was out of church. I want to tell you, if you're out of church more than you're in church, be careful. You will die spiritually. You know I'm telling you the truth this morning. Hey, listen, you, you need, there's an attack of the devil. That's what I was saying. There's an attack of the devil more than ever before. Hey, man, the devil wants your mind. Billboards. Phones, radios, everything, TV, everything, trying to put it in your mind. And let me just tell you this, and just wake our parents up a little bit, the devil's after your kids as well. <laughs> the, the indoctrination today of the left or the woke movement or even the homosexual agenda is attacking cartoons today. What do you think that Clifford the Big Red Dog would be talking about having two daddies? Come on now, you know I'm telling the truth this morning. We weren't afraid to say this 40 years ago. Say, so before you set little Susie or little Johnny before the cartoons, you better watch it. Do you think that maybe Hollywood has an agenda? Brother Doug, you think that Hollywood, yeah. Boy, of course, what, what am I saying? I'm telling you, the devil has his army. We need an army for the Lord. And as a pastor, sometimes I feel like, man, i got to wake him up a little bit. You better be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your, your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a nice, gentle, tender lion. Come on now. What's it say? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a... Boy, you ever see a roaring lion? Get out of there if you do. A roaring lion. What's he doing? Yeah, he's sleeping. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't care. Listen, I've been to the zoo and I've seen some of those lions. I don't care if that guy, if that joker acts like he's sleeping. I'm not going in the cage. He will look at me and see a T-bone. I go to the glass and they're licking their lips. If I could just get to the other side of that thing, I would be fed for a year. I'd never have to eat again. <laughs> the devil wants to have you. He's sitting in the window, and the Bible says he falls out of that thing, and he's taken up dead. Now listen, I want to tell you, here's a good question. Are you in church more, or are you out of church more? By the way, this whole thing takes place in an evening service. Think about that. What do you miss when you miss Sunday night church? Well, you miss a lot of things. The Bible says here he's taken up dead. Who, who was he? He's a young man fighting to stay awake during the preaching. 
But because he's out of church more than he's in church, he falls out and he dies. The Bible says in verse number 10, Paul stops the preaching and he goes down and the Bible says, what does he do? Paul went down, fell on him and embracing him said, trouble not yourselves for his life is in him. What happened? Paul had that apostolic power to be able to raise the dead and that's, what it, that's exactly what he did. Now listen, you better be careful about getting out of church and falling out and dying spiritually because there's no apostles today to save you. Anybody claims to be an apostle? They're not. Apostolic church. Why? Well, there's still there's no apostles. They were given some gifts and they were given some signs to prove to the unbelieving Jew that they were of the Lord Jesus. But when they died, the signs died. Amen. Now listen, I just gave you truth right there. There ain't no apostles in here this morning. If somebody says, oh, did you talk to Apostle, uh, did you talk to Apostle Chris over there? Mm -mm. There's no apostles any, anymore. Amen. You better be careful falling out. The Bible says what happens, Paul raises him and then the Bible says Paul gets back to preaching and then notice verse number 12 and they brought the young man alive and notice and were not a little comforted. What's that mean church? They were very comforted. They were very comforted. Now let me say this this morning. I want you to get your pen. I want you to mark down four words. We're going to look at four pronouns this morning. Boy, in a time when you hear all about pronouns, you use the right pronoun. Things like, I want to give you four pronouns this morning. I want to give you a thought about this passage of Scripture. First of all, in verse number 7, I want you to underline that word, them. The Bible says, Paul preached unto them. I want you to underline that word, them. And then in verse number 8, the Bible says, they were in the upper chamber where they. I want you to underline the word, they. And then down in verse number 10, right towards the end, trouble not, and then notice, yourselves. Underline that word, yourselves. And then in verse number 12, the Bible says, and they. I want you to underline that. In our text, here's what we have. You'll notice this in this passage of Scripture. The Bible says that this is young man, his name's Eutychus. Now, you know what the word Eutychus means? It means this. It means fortunate. When you read the word fortunate around the word Eutychus, you'll say this, well... He was fortunate because Paul was around. He was fortunate that he made it past that day. But can I contest this morning, Brother Jarrett, with it, that the reason that I think that Eutychus was fortunate was this, because Eutychus had some friends. In fact, those four pronouns this morning, that's what it's talking about. There was some friends with Eutychus that day. I want to say this morning, you're fortunate if you have some friends. From the passage of Scripture this morning, let me give you this. What is a true friend? First of all, in verse number 7, the Bible says, Upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. Can I say, first of all, this morning, a true friend will bring you to church. That's pretty simple. But you know, a true friend will bring you to church I was thinking about what brings friends together someday. Hey, come on over. Man, we're having a party. Come on over. You know, a party will bring people together. Sports. Boy, sports really brings people together today. Events. Food.
saved you. Just do it. I want to tell you, something will break out in that thing. Something's going to happen. You say, man, let me tell you about the day when the Lord saved me. I want to tell you, that's the greatest commonality that we all can have. And what will bring true friends together is because of Calvary. Those here this morning that someone invited you to church, they said, man, they would not leave me alone until I came to church. Can I tell you this? That's a true friend. That's a true friend. Bring those up to me there, if you will. Somebody grab. Am I out of batteries this morning? I haven't lost the power, but I've lost my mic. Amen. All right. Let's get that switched out. whole service. Let's see. All right. Testing one, two. All right. We got it back. Praise the Lord. You know, there's nothing that brings friends together like the cross. Somebody invited you to church. I want you to look at that person that invited you to church, and I want you to think on this. That's a real friend. Well, that person that bought you those tickets to that concert... Man, they're a real friend. That person that bought you the perfect gift for your birthday, that's a real friend. They really love me. The person that gave you $1,000, say, man, that's a real friend. Can I say no? No. But that person that called and said, love to see you in church, point at them. That's the friend. That's the friend. Well, I'll never forget. Breaks my heart a little bit now. James. It's always building something. You know, it seemed like building a house or building... Very gifted. I mean, if he wasn't a pastor, he would just have been a multi, multi-millionaire. <clears throat> and I'll never forget, he was building a house. And he was putting a kitchen in one night. <laughs> it's 9 o'clock at night. Brother Allen, it's 9 o'clock at night. And James, I go over there, and James is like, I need your help for a couple minutes. And a couple minutes, you know, that's a relative term. And, and we get in that kitchen, and, and we start working on that thing. Well, I didn't realize this, but, you know, there's a certain type of thing where you have to have a certain amount done in order to get another draw from the bank, you know, and maybe you know what I'm talking about. Well, he had to have this kitchen done by 8 o'clock the next morning. And when I got there at like 8 o'clock the previous night, the cabinets were in boxes. <laughs> and James said, "Come, on, Chris, come over and help me for a couple minutes. Well, we set one cabinet. Brother Ken, we set one cabinet. And James looks at me and he says, can you stay with me? And by that time, it's about 11 o'clock. And I'm like, James, listen, I love you, but I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I think I had worked the whole day. And I said, man, I, 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 and you know what I said to him? You know what I said to him? I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And you know what? To this day, there's not too many regrets I have like that. That I didn't stay with him. Help him. Throughout the night. Man, it Breaks my heart now. Think about it a little bit. I said, James, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, the biggest regret would be not getting your friends into a good church. You know, that would be one of the biggest regrets that we should have as friends. You say, well, I, I didn't want to offend them. Can I say a true friend goes beyond offending someone? Who cares if you're going to offend them? You love them. You want the best for them. You're trying to get them into a place that's going to help them. They're going to get their life straightened out. They're going to start fulfilling their purpose in this life. But how many times, hey, hey boys, pay attention. How many times though 
Do we say, no, Pastor, I don't want to offend them, or, or I've never talked to my neighbor because they, they wouldn't be interested? Can I say that's not a true friend? A true friend will stick his neck out there and say, hey, come to church with me. A true friend will bring you to church. Let me say number two in verse number eight, so important. A true friend sees you for who you really are, and they still love you. Verse 8, the Bible says there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. You know what that means? Everybody could see Eutychus. Everybody could see him. I want to say this morning, listen. Your true friends see you for who you are. And they still love you. Boy, I'm so glad for that. I know I got a lot of failures and a lot of faults. But my friends see me and you know what? They look beyond that. And they still love me. Don't be afraid to be transparent with your friend. I want to tell you, a true friend's not going to get offended. In fact, the Bible says this, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. We were at football camp just a couple, couple years ago. And I forget, it's a challenge at football camp. And, uh, you know, there's 350 young men. It's a, it's a Christian-based football camp. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We go every year to football camp. And did, did, did Jacob or Josh go to football camp? It seems like Jacob did. I, did Josh go too? Yeah. And, uh, boy, nothing like it. So they go for a week and they pl play football all week, but they listen to probably four different preaching services a day. And there's nothing like I mean, 300, and last year there was 350 young men. And some good football. Man, there's some good football. And, uh, and football, but preaching. And, and the morning service, 6 a.m., the boys are coming in there. Their hair is going everywhere. Their breath is like, pfft, knock you out, you know. Not one of them brushes their teeth or takes a shower the whole week. So you can imagine just the aromas in that room. What do I need a shower for? I took one last month. You know, they say, no big deal. All these boys get together. I want to tell you, 6 a.m. service, no big deal. Preaching, fired up. Let's go! You know, fired up. But boy, I want to tell you, that 11 o'clock service, because you're on the practice field at 7.15, and you're out practicing football, you're in the heat. The heat, the sun's just baking you, you're, 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 and you're coaching, I mean, you're coaching like crazy. These men, I coach on the varsity team, I said, come on, you know, and you're trying to put your offense in. It's exciting, but man, you get to that 11 o'clock service, and you go in, and you've been out in 85 degree weather, and you come into 60 degree weather, I want to tell you, it's like, I mean, it could be, Billy Sunday could be preaching, and you're struggling. I mean, you're falling asleep. I mean, the greatest preachers of the faith are falling asleep. And I find myself getting tired. And I'm like, Chris, you're so, so wicked. Why are you so sleepy? Stop it. And I'm falling asleep. But then I look over and Brother Oliver Ray's is like, I thought, well, I don't like to judge myself by others, but I thought, well, if Brother Reza can do it, then I guess it's okay. But here I look over one year, and James is just gone. I mean, he's gone. No cares in the world. The preacher's preaching away. Brother Coral or something's preaching, and James is like, <sighs> and immediately as a good brother, what do I want to do to support him? Just click, take a picture. I did too. I took a picture. And man, I, 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 I sent it out to a group text. I said, here's a hero of the faith, you know. <laughs> and sent a picture there to Jay. I mean, Jay, just sleeping away. And we laughed about it and stuff like that. But you know what? Here's the a, here's a fact of it. I never looked at James any different because he fell asleep. Not one bit. Not one bit. I saw James for who he was. He saw me for who I was. Just a mess sometimes. But you know what? I loved him. Why, it's a true friend. You know, don't be afraid sometimes you say, Pastor, I'm afraid what my friend will think about me. Listen, a true friend will see you for who you are, and they still love you. Amen? 
That's what a true friend will do. They see you for who you are, and they still love you. The just man falleth seven times, yet riseth up again. Hey, you're going to fall, so what? Let's get up. Let's serve the Lord. Pastor, you, you don't... But Chris, you don't know what I've done in the past. Who cares? God don't care. Let's go on from here. Let's do something for the Lord. Pastor, you don't know where I've been. Who cares? Let's go from here. Let's serve the Lord. Can I say number three this morning? In verse number 10, so important. The Bible says Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. A true friend carries burdens. Can, listen this morning. A true friend carries burdens. Have you ever known a friend, but instead of them taking burdens off of you, you've known somebody that all they do is add. When we were kids, we'd be chopping wood out back. I can't believe, I was thinking the other day, I can't believe that my dad would just let us go with an axe and a maul and just say, boys, I want this done. We didn't know anything about it. I mean, we could have chopped our own foot off. You know, we had no idea, but he said, I want this wood cut. That was before wood splitters were invented, I think. And my dad looked at us three, but we had this game, and we, you know, we had fun with it. And we chopped this wood. I mean, we, we'd get going. We'd get going. How many of you chopped some wood before? Anybody at all? You know what I'm talking about. Brother Bob, you know what I'm talking about. Boy, we get chopping wood, and before you know it, you look over, and there's a pile of wood. Well, we had to take the wood in. So we had a game. And here was the game. Come here. Stretch out your arms. Get ready for the wood. All right, a little farther. 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 All right, there you go. Now curl your fingers in just a touch right there. All right. Here's the game. Load me up. Come on now. You know, it's a fun game. This is fun. And me and my brothers, the competitive juices are flowing. You know, here I am. I'm 10. James is 12. Ken's 15. And I'm trying to carry as much as Ken, you know. Ken's laughing the whole time. You know, James is taking it serious. And we're like, okay, load me up. One, boom. Two, whoop. Three, bam. One, two, three. All right, that's the base. That's the base, all right? Four, five, six. Pick your head up. All right, because that's where the next one's going. Right here, under the chin. Boom, boom, boom. And we had this game. All right, thank you, Joseph. We had this game, I'm, I'm telling you, we would try to load up this wood as much as possible. And you know what? It was competitive. It was fun. We had a good time with it. But all, all three of us brothers, what we were doing is we were, every now and then, somebody would get too much, and usually not Ken, but James would say, let me take a piece off. And you know what he was doing? He's like, I'll take that one. He wasn't adding more. Now, Ken would be like, you know, putting it on till I died, you know. <laughs> James would be, see his little brother, and he'd say, give me the, I'll take that one. You know what a true friend does? A true friend doesn't add to burdens. A true friend will take burdens away. Look at Galatians in chapter number two, uh, 6, because I want you to see this. I was thinking about just reading it, but I want you to see the words. If you will, look over there, Galatians chapter 6. And this is a powerful thought, and so good for us. Listen, let's not think on, our, on ourselves that we are better than someone else. That, well, I would never fall. I would never, you know, my mom always said, never say never. Before you know it, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Galatians 6, the Bible says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are what? Spiritual. Make fun of him. Is that what it says? Boy, but isn't that what we do, though? Isn't that what we do? We make fun of him. Ridicule him. Laugh at him. Mock them? No, the Bible says, ye which are spiritual, what should you be doing? Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Now let me just tell you what meekness is. It's not weakness. It's strength under control. 
And here's the idea of meekness. You restore that brother in meekness, you know why? It could be you. Listen, it could be you. So instead of making fun of them, instead of laughing at them, think about this. That could be me. I could be the drunk in the street. I could be the homeless person. I could be in jail. I could be in prison right now. In the spirit of meekness, restore such a one. Notice this. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And look at verse number 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Over the last several weeks, it's been such a blessing. Boy, so many people have texted and just encouraged me and I know encouraged James's family. Brother Jeff Owens, many of you don't know him, but Brother Jeff Owens has sent me numerous texts. And just in the middle of the day, sometimes he'll send me a text. I was thinking about you and, and just encouraging me in some way. And, and what he's, he's trying to bear my burden. But let me just tell you what a true friend will do. Here, here it goes. In 1992, there was the Olympics there, and uh, it was in Barcelona. And that year, something happened with a man named Derek Redmond. If you will Google this, you'll look it up. Anybody know where I'm going with this at all? Well, Derek Redmond was a runner, running the 400 meters. Derek Redmond took off running in 1992. Now, he had had five surgeries. I was reading this. He had had five surgeries. Brother Jared, in the 1988 games, I think in Beijing, he had torn his Achilles, uh, his Achilles tendon, an hour before he was supposed to run. So, you know, for an Olympic athlete, it's like, okay, if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it again? Tomorrow, next week? No, it's four years. So how many of those chances do you get? He had had five surgeries, all to do with his hamstring and, and, and his Achilles tendon and stuff like that, and 19, one hour in 1988 away from competing. And Brother Doug, he, he, he tore his, his Achilles tendon. Well, here we go. In 1992, it's going to be different. I think he was in Barcelona there, and they're getting ready to run the 400 meters. He takes it off. He gets 200 meters into the race, and he pulls up. And what is that? Hamstring. Anybody ever done it? Yeah. Not fun. And he pulls up. Well, guess what happens? For him, the race is, it's over. But it's not over. Here he goes. And he's holding. You can see him. You got to look it up. And he's holding his hand. I mean, he's done. Probably 200 meters away still. Everybody flies by him. They finish the race. But here he goes. And he's hopping. And he's hopping. And with one thought, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. Out of the stands over here, somebody darts down. They come running onto the track like a bolt. The guards are, are the, 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 the help there, they're trying to say, hey, you can't be. And he shoves them away like they're flies. Get out of here. Comes up behind Derek, bears him up, and they finish the race together. Who was it? It was his dad. His dad. They're trying to say, Get out of here. And he looked over at one of them and he said, boy, you better. No, no way. And he said, he made a statement. He, his dad just died, a, I think, a few years ago. And his dad made this statement because it's such a huge thing. And his dad said this. His name was Jim Redman. He said this. He said, I saw my son having a problem. And it was my duty to help him. Now, the Bible says, Christian, this morning, here's what the Bible says. There's going to be somebody that needs your help. And you're supposed to come up beside them. And maybe they're trying. And they failed. And they're trying to limp to the finish line. And they're hurting. And they desperately need somebody to come up behind them.
and grab them and to help them, listen, finish the race. Amen. There's somebody in your life, I, I don't know who it is, but I want to ask you this morning, who do you know that's having a problem? And it is your duty to help them. Your son. Your daughter. They're limping to the finish line. They desperately need you to come up beside and bear them up and say, let's go. Let's finish this. Well, I think so many of my friends, and I try to come up along them, <laughs> along the side of them, and, and bear them up a little bit. Come on, let's go. Let's do something for Jesus. I believe with all my heart, every person in here has somebody like that. And they need you. They need you. Who do you know that's having that problem? Let me say lastly, verse number 12, the Bible says they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. A true friend, listen, is there till the end. They were greatly comforted. Eutychus, he fell. He fell out. He died. He's brought back to life. And the Bible says, boy, they were greatly comforted. But you know what? No one said this. When that young man was raised back to life, not one person, the Bible says, said, hmm, serves him right. Fall asleep in church again. Come on now. He got what was coming to him. Boy, aren't you glad that you don't get what's coming to you? If we all got what we really deserved, we'd be in hell. But aren't you glad that the Lord came up beside us one day? Boy, I was trying to live the Christian life. I'm a Sunday school teacher. And I'm limping to the finish line. Wasn't even saved though. But I had a friend that came up beside me, the Lord Jesus, right there on Park Avenue and Home Road. He come up beside me and he bore me up. He said, Chris, you need to get saved. Boy, I was in a dangerous position. So dangerous. Because I thought I was good. I thought I was a good person. Well, I'm not going to go to hell. I, I'm a good church kid. I've never drank alcohol. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never done these things. I was in so much danger. But I had a friend that came along. And he gave me a chance. He didn't say, you're going to get what you deserve. But boy... I'm so glad he gave me another chance and then pulled into that old grocery store <laughs> and asking Jesus to be my Savior. Boy, the Lord saved me that day. Isn't it something that when Judas comes to betray Jesus, catch this and I'm done. Judas, he comes to betray Jesus, 30 pieces of silver. He comes into the Garden of Gethsemane and the Lord Jesus is standing there and He said, Whoever I kiss, that's the one. That's the one. Take Him. And you know what Jesus said to Judas? Friend. Friend. Boy, what a powerful thought. I want to tell you this morning, if you're not saved and born again this morning, the Lord is not here this morning to take you to hell. The Lord's here this morning so you don't have to go to hell. I, I, I wish, Brother Joe, I wish I could convey it enough, the difference that Jesus makes in your life. If you've never accepted Him, that's why the Bible says today's the day of salvation. Boy, no, no friend like Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning.
I wonder this morning if you're here and you say, Pastor, I don't know for sure that I'm saved. I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I've realized it this morning. Maybe I'm a good person and, 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 and Pastor, God would never send me to hell. I'm good. But you've never been saved. You've never had that time when the Lord spoke to your heart. And you just said, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. You've never had that time. You say, Pastor, if I died today, I might go to hell. You don't know. I would this morning that you would be honest with the Lord. Be honest. Do you know for sure you're on your way to heaven? You say, Pastor, what's the big deal? I'm young. I have a long time. Boy, I want to tell you, we don't know if we have tomorrow. You don't know if you have tomorrow. That's why the Bible says today's the day of salvation. How many of you say, Pastor, I know for sure I'm on my way to heaven. I have a Bible reason. I'll raise my hand as a testimony. I know for sure I'm on my way to heaven. Raise your hand if you do. You can put those hands down. Would there be someone here this morning that would be honest with the Lord right now? Be honest. Do you know for sure you're on your way to heaven? If you would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure but I'm going to admit that this morning. Pray for me. If that's you, you say, I don't know, but I don't want to go to hell. If that's you, put your hand up, put it right back down. I'm not sure that I'm saved. Pastor, pray for me this morning. I'm not going to announce you. I'm not going to call your name. That's not what this is about. But this is about you being honest with God. And let me just say, you might never be in a place like this again in your life. And right now is the time of salvation. You might never get another chance like this. Would there be someone here this morning and say, Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. Pray for me. If that's you, put your hand up, put it right back down. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. Maybe you're here this morning and as the preaching was taking place, something came into your mind. There's somebody that you need to come up alongside and you need to bear them up. They need you. It's your duty to do it. Without you, they don't have any hope. They need a friend, a true friend, to come up and bear them up. Maybe it's a son. Maybe it's a daughter, a mom or a dad, a neighbor, a co-worker. You can see them. They're limping. Hey, Let's come up beside them. Let's bear their burden. Not judging them, but wanting them to accept Jesus as their Savior. If the Lord's put someone on your heart like that this morning, you know, it would be a great thing to come to an old-fashioned altar this morning and say, Lord, help me to be the friend that you want me to be. Help me to be the Christian that you want me to be. Help me to bear someone else's burden. I hope we'll do that this morning. And thank God that He can use us. Let's stand our feet. As the Lord spoke into your heart, the altar's open this morning.
We all have a lot of regrets in this life as we go through it and we say, you know, Pastor, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. You know, I wish I would have stayed and helped James with that kitchen. <laughs> so many times I say, boy, I wish I would have done that, but I can't go back. I want to tell you the greatest regret you'll ever have is at the great white throne judgment when all those people are being dropped into hell your friend your neighbor maybe even a family member and just for a moment as the Lord says depart from me ye that work iniquity they turn and they look at you and for a moment why didn't you tell me? Boy, there'll be no greater regret than that. Why do you think the very next chapter the Lord says, and he'll wipe away all the tears? He'll wipe away all the tears. I want to tell you, as many people as I can in these last days, I know people will look at me and they may think he is a crazy preacher but I, I got to be honest I really don't care think about me what you want I am going to tell you about Jesus because I know what he's done for me you know the Lord he's up there in heaven he's rooting us on I got a feeling now that my brother he's up there and he's I can see him with that stupid smirk on his face. <laughs> Come on, Chris. Come on, Chris. Boy. I don't want to have any regrets. I want to tell everybody I can about Jesus. I'm going to tell you just the people that are in this room this morning, we could make an impact on this world right here. I want to tell you, we could impact Crestline and, and Ontario. Man, I was passing out a track the other day at Sam's Club, and the lady's like, I just got one of these from a lady that said that her son pastors the church. And it was, must have been from Mrs. Woodside there. And so many times I run into people, they say, I got, I got one of those. And you know what, that, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Well, what are people going to think? Who cares? I care more about what he's thinking about it. Amen. I want to be everything that I can be for Him. Well, let's go out of here today. Let's do something for the Lord today. If you're not saved, I want to ask you to do something for me. If you say, Pastor, I still don't know for sure I'm on my way to heaven. If you're not saved, see me before you leave. I'll never forget a couple months ago, a lady that Brother Jason Cardin brought with him, a lady, she left here she made it down the road, and she came right back. Coming, I could see her coming across the parking lot, tears coming down her eyes, and said, I can't leave. i got to get saved. <laughs> we took her back. She accepted Jesus as her Savior. And now she knows she's on her way to heaven. I want to tell you, don't leave here doubting your salvation. Boy, heaven is real, but so is hell. So is hell. Boy, thank you so much. I'm honored you're here today. Miss Lois Biddle came this morning. Miss Lois, would you stay in for me this morning? Miss Lois came this morning to join us here at Grace Baptist Church. And uh, I love when people adding, the Lord adding to the church. He said he'd do that. And uh, we thank God for it. All in favor of receiving Miss Lois into membership, raise your right hand. And any opposed, same sign. Praise the Lord. Wonderful to have Miss Lois. Thank you, Miss Lois. You come by, shake her hand. Miss Lois, you stay up here after we say our prayer. Come by, shake her hand. Welcome them here to the family. Friends, thank you for being here. We hope that you'll be back tonight. Boy, 6 o'clock. We might even have more tonight than we do this morning. The chili cook-off. It's going to be a lot of fun. Fellowship. And I want to tell you, there's no better life. Uh, young men, young lady, there's no better life than living for Christ. It's the best life. I want to tell you, it's the best life there is. So let's go out of here. Let's do something for the Lord. Be back tonight, 6 o'clock in the Lord's house. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Slater, if you will, dismiss us in prayer.